Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. We're here in the Cherokee Batting Range Podcast Studio. For episode number 120, we're going to listen to a classic oldie from our archives, and hopefully you'll enjoy that. Before we get into the episode, let's talk about our sponsors, the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats. Use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. It's a great way for you to save a little bit of money on a great bat and also help support everything fast pitch at the same time. And patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. If you're in a position where you can help support us, please do so. Go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. We really do appreciate the patrons that we have had on board for, for so long and do appreciate all their support, but we would love to add some more people to the list. Our topic today is, again, talking about the art of coaching. Able to get out and do some uh, uh, team practices and do some of our uh, Rent-A-Coach program a little bit this year. And one of the things that uh, I keep seeing that I wanted to uh, talk about, you know, we've uh, been on a, on a mission to get coaches to stop saying don't. Right. Well, the second thing I want coaches to stop doing is thinking that explaining what you want is the same thing as coaching. Right. No, I'm I'm on board with that for sure, Tori. I know a lot of times just saying that we covered it, we covered that in practice, right? right. That doesn't mean we, we practice that in practice. Right. Well, there's a Chinese proverb that goes like this. If you say it, I forget it. If you see it, you remember it. If you do it, you learn it. Learn it. If our idea of coaching is learning, teaching, and our idea of coaching is setting our players up to be successful when the pressure's on, right? then we have to always remember this proverb. If your idea of coaching is you're going to tell them what you want them to do, you have to understand that the way that this is playing out is you can be the greatest explainer. You can be the greatest speaker. Technical. You can be the yeah. most technically sound. You can have all the right information. And everything you can be saying can be absolutely spot on. Right. But the kids don't remember it. And they can't do anything with it. It will eventually leave them because the things that they hear are the least impactful of the ways of that the they have pieces. to learn. Right. People that have been in education already know this. Teachers who are coaches already know that you know, in the classroom, we've gotten away from and get further and further away from the old traditional lecture because we know that kids don't remember very much of what they hear. You know, in the classroom now, we have a lot more hands-on, a lot more um, you know, interactive, a lot yeah. more things that are tying the learning into other senses. And so for us as coaches, we just have to be smart enough to understand that if we want our players to truly Learn. master a skill, yep. we have to take our coaching to a different level. Now, I understand why this trap happens, because we all fall into it. We don't feel like we have enough time or enough space or enough whatever to really work on it as a skill, as a drill, as something that's going to you know, have some more time attached to it. And so we throw a quick explanation, we throw a quick chalk talk at it, and we think that that's going to somehow cover it, so, you know, solve all our issues. The teams that um, I see on a regular basis, the teams that I work with, I think are are understanding more and more that if we want our kids to really learn these things and to be able to perform them when the pressure's on, we've got to take that level of learning to a whole another you know another level. Right. No, that makes sense, Tori. And you know, we were spoiled in the college uh, setting because we would have the players you know, on an ongoing basis, day after day, week after week, month after month, where uh, for our travel people, it gets to be a little bit of a challenge to cover everything and give them enough opportunity to execute the skills to the point that they do learn everything. So, right. Well, but here, here's the thing that I would challenge that statement by. If you spend 20 minutes explaining something, you could have spent one minute explaining and 19 minutes sure. practicing and sure. that 19 minutes could have been productive learning opportunity 
versus the 20 minutes that we spent talking about Understood. it. Understood. Yeah. So, and I think that that's kind of where this this trap comes from. We know what we want and we are good at explaining it, so we think that the explanation is the same as as truly practicing it. No, I think my thought Tori is just that we get together once a week maybe with with our travel group and for a, one of the, our mega practice, right? Right. But it's tough to uh, it's tough to cover everything all the time. So maybe giving them ways to practice and do things on their own, you know, present the information, show them some drills and things. But right, you know, have the expectation that they are going to do some things on their own would be helpful. Right. Well, and I think that that expectation is good too. But I think that's just another trap. Yeah. You well, know, so I mean, you can only so get here, as much in as you can get in. <laughs> right. But but here's what I what I'm going to just throw out there. I've been at practices that have lasted three hours that coaches have talked for an hour and a half. Oh, sure. I've been at practices that have lasted for six hours that coaches have talked for four hours. If we're only going to get one practice a week and we're going to have a mega practice, 15 minutes of that six hours talking and five hours and 45 minutes doing drills and doing sure. specific things where you get the hands-on opportunity. reason that I wanted us to, to take a good hard look at the philosophy is that I just see too many people that are operating on the assumption that by explaining it, that's going to be a, a, an effective tool. Absolutely. No, and, that makes and so sense. We, need, we need to break that mold. Let's say you're going to have one practice a week and you get them for three hours. If you're spending more than 15 minutes of that three hours talking, I think you're really misunderstanding how this all should work. Missing the, the yeah. whole... When I say that, what do I mean? So let's say you have to spend two minutes explaining the drill, then spend 20 minutes doing it. Sure. Don't spend 20 minutes explaining what the drill is supposed to look like and then spend two minutes doing it. Right. Which is what I keep seeing over and over again. Only going to have three hours, pick eight things that you want to cover, spend 16 minutes talking about them, and the rest of that three hours doing them. Sure. You know, I think then we're going to start to really see some progress because what do we know? If I say it, I forget it. If I see it, I remember it. So, even if they're not actively doing it themselves, if they're set up in a situation where they're watching their teammates do it while they're getting their opportunities. You know, if they get one rep out of every four plays and the other three they get to see somebody else doing it, they're, they're remembering still, it. Yeah. If we're running first and third plays and I'm the third string shortstop, I don't get to be in on every play but I get to watch the first string and the second string shortstop do it every time and so I'm still acquiring remembering yeah okay it's not as good as doing it but it's still way better than just having my just coach talk about, about it. Yeah. okay your job is to cover third if the throw comes to you if it comes quickly you're going to throw it back home if it doesn't come quickly you're going to try to get the out at second let's move on to the next topic okay so you got it good let's good. move on okay so now we're going to cover you know relays okay so your job as the shortstop is to be the relay person on all the balls that get hit to left field you got it good all right let's move on to cutoffs all right so now your job is now let's take BP yeah. and let everybody stand in the field. Right. <laughs> so, um, and, and again, so I understand yeah. why we fall into the traps that we fall into because we we coach the way we were coached, and the reality yeah. of it is most of us weren't coached by very good coaches. Good-hearted. Yeah, I mean, they meant well. Yeah. They wanted to do well, but in comparing what they know or knew compared to what we know now, pretty big gap there. You know, we grew up with coaches that spent a lot of time explaining what we wanted because they thought that was what coaching really was. Sort of like back then, that's what teachers thought teaching was. I mean, I remember going to college classes Just where lecture, the professor yeah. would lecture for an hour. There'd be not a single slide, not a single picture, not a single anything. And they would talk and you were supposed to remember and learn. And well, we got straight A's, didn't we? Uh, uh, yeah, I had, I had the Animal House. Uh, I had the Animal House grade point average. No, we tried hard. Yeah, we tried hard. We yeah. tried hard not to fall asleep listening to the you know the professor lecture for an hour. Yeah. Um, but that analogy of you know what happened when we get stuck in a classroom listening to the professor talk for an hour. We didn't remember much. We didn't learn anything, we and half go, the time we were not off. We had to go do it all over again on our own. Right. Yeah. So if we think as coaches, because our classroom is the field, that we can spend a lot of time talking and kids are going to somehow learn it, you know, it's, it's just kind of the same thing. So we want to start to think about how we're organizing practice. We have to check ourselves. So what I would tell every coach to do, put a stopwatch in your pocket. When you start talking, hit start. When you stop talking, hit stop. Don't look at it, but hit stop. Leave it in your pocket. 
Come back. Next time you start talking again, Click hit start. Yeah. When you stop talking, hit stop. And do that until you wrap up practice at the end of practice and you send the kids home. Or have somebody else do it for you if you think you're going to get distracted. Yeah, every time you I know, talk, start, yeah, start yeah, the pick, watch. Pick, pick yeah. one of your assistant coaches, You know, somebody that you can trust, somebody that you know is going to remember to turn the stopwatch off when you stop talking so that you don't get burned by you know, somebody <laughs> else's incompetence. But what you're going to find is even those of us that think we don't waste time talking spend a lot of time talking. So, Tori, I think what, what, uh, what you're getting at is that if we're conscious of this whole concept that we're going to do a much better job at being efficient and giving them opportunities to execute the drills right. rather than just hear about it. Right. Yeah, because if we really want our team to, let's say, be really good at bunt coverage, chalk talking it to start with so that they all understand their jobs, that's great. But how long should it really take to get out a chalkboard and, and you know draw some X's and say, okay, first baseman, you do this. Second baseman, you do this. Shortstop, you do this. Third baseman, you do this. Now let's practice it. I mean, we could even send that out in an email. Right. And and nowadays, that probably would be even more effective. You know, send the kids a, a right. Google Doc or whatever with the charts in it and, and, and ask them to look at it beforehand. This is you what know. we're doing when and we're then, warmed and up. And then you, you yeah. don't pull out a chalkboard, you know, our, our discussion about the millennials. You pull out your tablet that already has the drawing that you sent them, you know, the, yep. the diagram that you sent them. Quick review. You show it, and you, know, you probably can have it animated now, so you don't even have to draw arrows. You know, you just hit, you know, click the button, and everybody moves on the on the screen to the places they're supposed to. Now, you and I can't do that, that but I know cool. But I know other people can. Yeah. So so we've got that graphic all set up. You know, so now we can spend you know a minute talking about what they do. Then we can spend ten minutes practicing it. That kind of way of thinking is what we want our coaches to start to, to understand. But the stopwatch challenge is the next challenge that we're going to throw out to our coaches. You know, we had the good fortune on uh, uh, last week's uh, Everything Fast Pitch podcast to yes. have a coach express Share to us, us how stop saying don't has already made him a much better coach and how he didn't even realize how, how often, how often he was saying it until he ran a test on himself after listening to the podcast. Stopwatch test is our way for you to double check to see what what your practices really are. The thing that I found shocking is even people that think they don't talk very much are looking at it at the end of a three hour practice going, I talked for 45 minutes. Right. That's I don't believe that. There's no way I talked for 45 minutes. But then that number is looking, you know, the number doesn't lie, the stopwatch doesn't lie, and then you start to think back, whoa, wait a second. I did spend a little bit of extra time talking about those first and third plays. I did spend a little bit extra time talking about bunting. And, Tori, just like you were saying, you know, when we were in, in school and in university or high school and, uh, and we're being lectured for an hour, that was the longest hour in the world. Yep. Right? So same thing at practice. If the kids are active and they're, you know, moving from place to place and they're constantly going, that three-hour practice goes by like, you know, just like a snap. Right. And they're excited about the next one that's coming, you know, next week or down later in the week. So. Right. Yeah. And, and the most important thing is because what we're asking our players to do, it doesn't matter what skill it is that we're practicing, what, you know, defensive alignment, what offensive play, bunting, hitting, pitching. That's what pitching. they came there for. Right. That, yeah. yeah, that's what they want to spend their time working on. Yeah. But we want them to be able to perform those skills under pressure. We, you know, we, don't, we don't judge whether we're coaching well on how they do it when there's no pressure. You know, we, we really don't get any bonus points because set this up and we do it with no pressure, that they're good at it then. Be a we're, reaction. Yeah, we, we yeah. get tested when we're playing in that really big game. They yeah. get tested when we're playing in that really big game. The chances of them remembering what you told them and being able to execute what you explained to them, it's the bottom of the seventh inning, and it's three to two, and the tying runs at third, and the winning runs at second, and something happens. Needs to, we need to react. Yeah, yeah if, if we're out there thinking, well, let's see, coach said <laughs> in this situation, when that ground ball gets hit to me, I'm going to go home. No, wait, wait, well, wait. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. She's already shaking hands with the people in the dugout. Now what do I do? Oh, wait, now the second run scored. So it's important that we allow enough practice time, enough act, active time for the kids to experience it. In that model, you know, we want to correct mistakes, but we also want to make sure that we're giving them an, a little bit of space to think it through for themselves a little bit too. You know, we talked about the first and third thing a couple of episodes ago. You know, the very best team I ever had at running first and third plays was the team that finally got mad at themselves for being bad at it. And came out and worked own. on it on their own. 
Um, and for coaches, it's a, it's a very challenging thing because we think that if we're not the only source of knowledge, that somehow you know, we're, we're dropping the ball. And so we want to make corrections. But again, if those corrections lead us to talking a lot again, instead of letting them experience it, I think we're falling back into that same trap. No, I think that's just great, like we said, Tori, to be conscious of it and uh, try and make adjustments that are going to give them the most opportunity to get the reps in. And again, the idea of, let's say, first and third plays. If we run that first and third play and the second baseman's job is to cut the ball or fake the cut and let the ball go through, if she screws it up, she already knows that she did something wrong. She probably doesn't need a three-minute explanation about what she should have done. She probably needs a chance to go do it again and try something different. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No. Because in, in, while we're explaining it, she could have probably practiced it two or three more times. At least. And again, that's, that's the moral of our story today for our coaching friends, that take a good hard look at what your practice plan looks like. Take a good hard look at your coaching style. And if your coaching style is a whole lot of talking, we want you to check that because I'm just going to tell you flat out, I don't think it's the best way to do it. Practice time's limited. Right. And if we only have three hours yep. and we spend 45 minutes talking, that's a lot of time that we didn't spend. And then the flip side of it is the way that the players process that time. So let's say we have a big wrap-up discussion at the end of practice. So let's say we, you know, we already, you know, we're there for three hours. In that three hours, you know, I, I coached, I talked, slashed, I thought I coached, but I talked for 45 minutes. Right. They probably don't see that as I totally wasted their time when we wrap up practice and now we have another half hour discussion or, and, and I have to admit I was as bad at this. You might've lost them yeah, at that point. No, you know, the 45 minute or one hour long post practice wrap up discussion slash rant slash me being mad because I didn't like something slash me being a jerk discussion or me trying to pump them back up because they didn't have a great practice. And so I'm going to just keep telling them how amazing they are talk or whatever it was. Whatever was pertinent. Right. You could see the eyes glazing over. You could see the focus disappearing. Thing we talked about, about coaching the current generation. What do they want? They want to know what practice is going to be. They want to know when it's going to end because they got other things that they need to get to. Say so we've all been there and done that, right? Right. You know, practice was supposed to be noon to three. And I spend from 3 to 3.45 wrapping up practice by telling them how amazing they are. They don't really care that I thought they were amazing. Right. They started to think about, well, you know, 43 minutes ago, I should have been in the car on my way to my study, my, study, yeah, hall, my, or my study yeah. hall or my birthday party or my bowling trip or my little sister's dance recital or whatever it else it was that was on the schedule for that day. And so understanding that that's how the, you know, the modern players processing all that that's part of what we have to you know kind of keep coming back to and again you know the idea of we coach as we were coached yeah we can grow from there yeah and we, and we want to because yeah. uh, very few of us can look back and say man I coached for an amazing coach I loved going to practice every day or I loved going to practice every practice and as much as I hate it times change and we got to change with them right so. and if, if we do that then we're going to always stay ahead of the curve and if we can stay ahead of the curve we're going to be in good shape so coaches you have to stop, watch out. Have somebody time you at your very next practice. If you're speaking more than 10% of the time that you're at practice, I think we need to check ourselves and start to think about where the time is going that we're speaking. And we need to fall back on the old idea of just remember back to sitting in school, sitting in that classroom when that professor was up there yakking and yakking and yakking, and you were supposed to listen to everything they said and just miraculously remember it all. And like you said, Tori, they uh, they show up, they're ready to get going, and if we cool them right down with a long talk, then it's going to be tough to fire them back up. Right. right? So, um, so that's our topic for today, that uh, explaining is not really coaching. And so we want to change the model, make sure that we're spending as much time as we possibly can with them active, drills, skills working on the different things, setting up simulations, setting up game simulations so they can actually experience what it is that we want them to experience and then let them go, give them an opportunity to work on it, learn from it, and honestly help themselves a little bit too. No, oh, I love it. Well, we hope you enjoyed that oldie but goodie. That's going to wrap up this week's episode. For Coach Don McKinley and our producer Stan Lewis, this is Coach Tori saying thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.